Aortic dissection is such a difficult diagnosis to make, and we spend a lot of time focusing on making that diagnosis, picking up these subtle presentations of aortic dissection. What we don't spend as much time on is how to manage that dissection once you pick it up. Ultimately, these patients are going to need surgical assessment. They're going to need an ICU. But what should we be doing in the emergency department when we see those patients? Our focus is on anti-impulse therapy. That means lowering both the heart rate and the blood pressure. And the reason we're doing that is because that wave of blood coming out of the heart is going to be striking that dissection flap. And so we want to reduce the number of times it's striking the dissection flap, reducing the heart rate, and the strength at which it is striking the dissection flap, so reducing the blood pressure. Most of the time we talk about the MAP, here we're really focused on the systolic blood pressure. The approach to anti-impulse therapy is really three-pronged. The first one is the one that is often overlooked, which is providing adequate analgesia. And actually, this should happen before you make the diagnosis of dissection. You see that patient in front of you with intense pain. Perhaps they also have that tearing pain going to the back, although we know that's not the common presentation. But often these patients do have severe pain. Until we reduce or manage that pain, we're not going to be able to get the heart rate and blood pressure down. A lot of the heart rate and blood pressure changes we see in front of us are going to be driven by the patient's endogenous catecholamines. The pain that they're having is ramping up those catecholamines. And so until we lyse that catecholamine response, we're not really going to be able to fix the blood pressure and heart rate. So we want to start by giving them analgesia. We can do this before we get imaging. And my go-to drug here is fentanyl, usually around one mic per kilo. And then I'm going to redose it every 15 to 20 minutes. Adequate analgesia can markedly reduce both the heart rate and the blood pressure. So go ahead and initiate that management before you're going for your definitive imaging. As we are managing the patient's pain, we can start our heart rate control. The goal heart rate here is somewhere in the 50 to 60 range, and the ideal agent here is going to be a beta blocker. Beta blocker of choice is Esmolol if you have it. Esmolol selectively antagonizes the beta-1 adrenergic receptors, so it's really going to be helpful in getting that heart rate down. The dosing of esmolol is to start with a bolus of 500 to 1,000 mics per kilo, and then you want to follow that with an infusion of 50 mics per kilo per minute. Every 5 to 10 minutes, we're going to check that heart rate and consider titrating up our esmolol drip. The way we do this is we can increase by 50 mics per kilo per minute, but we also have to redose the bolus. So we're going to re-bolus 500 to 1,000 mics per kilo, and then we're going to increase our drip by 50 mics per kilo per minute. After we have provided adequate analgesia, we've started that heart rate control, make sure to recheck the blood pressure because that might have been enough to bring the blood pressure down to the level that you want, but in many patients it won't be enough. And so we're going to have to then start specific blood pressure management. Our goal blood pressure here is a little bit variable depending on your hospital, on your intensivist, on your cardiothoracic surgeons. Generally, we're targeting a systolic between 90 and 100 millimeters of mercury. The ideal agents to reach for here are either clavidipine or nicardipine because they are pure arterial vasodilators. If you're using nicardipine, I would load this 5 milligrams over about 5 minutes and start your drip at 5 milligrams per hour. At about 10 minutes, recheck your systolic blood pressure. If it hasn't reached your goal, you want to redose that 5 milligram load and increase your drip by 2.5 milligrams per hour. If you happen to have clavidipine, fantastic, because this is an easily titrated agent. It's pretty rapid on. You can start at 1 to 2 milligrams per hour as an IV drip, and then titrate by doubling that rate every 90 seconds. If you happen to work in one of the many places that doesn't have either nicardipine or clavidipine, I've got a couple of other options for you. Option one is to use labetalol. You can use the labetalol in tandem with esmolol, or you can use labetalol alone, as that will have both heart rate and blood pressure effects. Labetalol dosing is typically 10 milligrams as an IV push over about two minutes, and then start your drip at two milligrams per minute with reassessments every five minutes to make sure that you are reaching your goal. If you don't reach your goal, titrate up by somewhere between 0.5 and one milligram. Option two is to continue to use Esmolol for your heart rate and then add nitroprusside for your blood pressure management. Problems with nitroprusside is that it can cause reflex tachycardia. It's very hard to titrate, Honestly, I haven't used the drug since somewhere around 2006, so it's not a drug I'm very familiar with, not a drug I'm reaching for because of those issues. Both of those options, either the labetalol or the esmolol plus nitroprusside, have a lot of issues, much more difficult to titrate, much more difficult to manage the patient's heart rate and blood pressure, 
And so if you don't have nicardipine or clavidipine, you should really be asking your hospital for these agents, not just for the patient with dissection, but for all of the patients where you are acutely managing blood pressure. Nicardipine is a great agent for subarachnoid hemorrhages, for traumatic intracerebral hemorrhages, for hypertensive encephalopathy, and so on. Let's quickly recap that three-pronged approach to pharmacotherapy in dissection. Number one is to deal with analgesia. You can start this before you get the diagnosis. These patients tend to be in a lot of pain. Give them fentanyl, stop that catecholamine surge. That's gonna help to lower the heart rate and blood pressure. And until you deal with their pain, you'll never get their heart rate and blood pressure down. Step two is heart rate control. Esmolol is the ideal agent here. Your goal is a rate of 50 to 60 beats per minute. And then finally, we wanna manage the blood pressure if it hasn't already been managed by the other things that we have done. So that's step three is to start nicardipine or clavidipine with a target systolic blood pressure somewhere between 90 and 100 millimeters of mercury. You do have those backup options of labetalol or possibly nitroprusside, but clavidipine or nicardipine are better agents for the management here.